I'm a little over 125 hours into Elden Ring, and every time I feel like this is it. This is the last dungeon. This is the last part of the world. This game continues to impress me with more original content to uncover. Um, this gameplay is streamed, by the way, t from my PlayStation 5 directly on Twitch. I recently upgraded to Fiber. This is the fastest upload speed in the planet. For some reason, PlayStation caps out uh, at 24 megabit per second. So it's not the best quality, but it's the best I could get natively from my console without getting a capture card and potentially bricking my HDR settings and all that other stuff. So you're gonna get what you're gonna get and you're gonna like it. <laughs> but I think it looks pretty good. A lot better than the other stuff I put out, that's for sure. So thank you AT&T for not sucking ass like Spectrum and giving me meaningful fiber. But I wanted to talk today about this particular area that I'm in that I don't know why I turned around and left. I guess I'm still exploring more stuff and trying to figure out where I wanna go next. Um, this, all, this whole little area that I explored, which took me a little over an hour, was actually a optional area in uh, Faramazula, which was really cool because a lot of times you find these stone sword keys that open up a door where there's just maybe one enemy and like a treasure chest or something behind it. And that's about it. You really don't find a lot of stuff. Um, this one opened up to a giant spanning area with two additional dragon fights and surprisingly the finale of the Alexander quest line, which I was pleasantly surprised that Alexandra was hiding behind a stone sword key door. I mean, I opened them all anyway, and I think I've been pretty meticulous about exploring every little nook and cranny of this game, trying to find all the little treasures and do everything that I can possibly do. Um, and while I am still a little frustrated, and I'll save that for my final review, which who knows when it's going to be, after I've actually rolled credits on this game, uh, about my frustration with finding some of the actual quests and navigating through some of these optional dialogue options and figuring out where the hell to go. Um, I've got to say, at least on the exploration point, I think I've been pretty on point. Really navigating through everything and just taking my sweet time, checking every corner, every pot, every door, every everything in order to be successful. And that is what blows me away about this game so much. Whether or not you're a fan of From Software games or the Soulsborne experience. I have specced my character and respect about a dozen times since then, actually. Um, I'm currently now using uh, Rivers of Blood um, in a pure blood build, which I really love. But I'm still using the tried and true uh, katana that I got at the creation of my samurai character. That's still using it. In this particular gameplay, this is a uh, maybe a week ago when I captured this. Um, it's a cold. It's a cold Uga Uga Chikana. I am probably butchering the hell out of that name. We'll just say Ninja Sword. But it's a cold variant with the Chilling Mist uh, weapon of art put on there. Uh, I really spent a lot of time leveling up my um, intelligence to get a really nice perk there with some dexterity. And this thing really does rip through enemies, except when I die. Um, it really does rip through enemies, and I was having so much fun with it. But I wanted to take some time today to talk a little bit about some of the exploration of Elden Ring. And just sometimes how when you're walking around, you find really cool areas. So this whole area is what I would consider optional content. Um, it does not progress into uh, the story um, other than Alexander is here, which is really cool. Didn't really expect that to happen. Um, but this whole area is just about finding more treasures, finding rare drops, killing harder enemies, getting more runes, progressing through my character's arc, and all behind a random stone key optional door, which led to this probably hour plus just tangential adventure. I thought that was really cool. 
And I'm really glad as I die again. I'm really glad that Elden Ring has so many layers of depth here. And there are so many really cool ways to progress through the world. And so many fun things to find. Um, I would really tell anybody who has, you know, maybe considered this isn't a game for them. Or kind of rushed through it just because they didn't want the ending to be spoiled. Not like you're going to understand it anyway. Um, but I got to say, this is one of the few games that honestly the quote-unquote golden pathing path of something just really feels to me like a major disappointment and a major letdown in terms of all the cool things you could be seeing and doing. I found unique enemy designs. I found unique items. I found unique environmental, I don't want to say a puzzle, just areas to explore. I do have little, you know, like the lanterns. I mean, the basic kind of stuff we've seen in the game. All behind optional areas that were not part of the main game. And I, was, I felt genuinely satisfied for exploring and being rewarded at the end. And I, I really liked that. I thought that was really, really cool that the game really kind of rewards you in that sense. And I really struggle to think any other game that has so much optional content that's good stuff. That's not just like a little throwaway quest or a little random item or something like that, but like meaningful pieces of lore and gear. And I, and I really struggle with that and I can't think of anything. I mean, maybe like an old Final Fantasy game, maybe like Final Fantasy, I don't know, maybe like two or, you know, when you got the ship and you could fly around, maybe you'd find some weird island and there'd be a little optional area to explore in there. But it was really more like, it didn't seem like there was whole optional dungeon type things. Maybe you'd find an optional rune Obviously, at the end of Final Fantasy VII, you had the optional weapons that you could combat for an extra challenge, but that was more just like a one-off thing, Like, and you kind of knew where they were. The game's kind of like, oh, here's a really hard boss. After you've done everything, this is where you're going to challenge yourself, and after you fight this really hard boss, that's when you're going to, you know, like, that's kind of the end of the game. But here, I mean, the litany of gear and tech and dungeons and things I found is really cool. And I just can't commend this game enough for figuring out how to really sink time and investment. I have never been this fully invested in a game really that I can think of in a long, long, long time. And I really can't think of a game that every time I played it, I mean, yeah, you're going to get the bullshit deaths that happen all the time. But, I mean, I'm holding my own here. I'll do a little back. You know, I, I did get smoked a few times by those harder skeleton monsters. But I figured it out. And I moved on. And now I'm into the next pack. And, yes, combat is punishing. And, yes, I am playing a melee build. And maybe magic's better. Or maybe had I had my River of Blood build now, I would have had a better chance. Because these guys do hit really hard. It's hard to say. Everybody plays differently. And, you know, the, you know, the adage, get good. <laughs> I mean, I'm 120 hours in, like, I think I'm as good as I could get. <laughs> Maybe I'm missing something, I don't know. But my point is, um, it's just really rewarding to have different options of exploration available to you. Um, this whole thing you're seeing, everything you're seeing here, all this architecture, all these enemy types, everything, this is just bonus, just bonus. It's really cool. So I want to commend Elden Ring and talk a little bit about that and just say that, you know, I appreciate it. You know, I remember when the world was going into a very, very heavy online world of multiplayer. Companies' eyes got really big when they heard of online only. I always talk about that, you know, the design choice with the Xbox One where they were going to be always online under Don Matrick and how much that frustrated me. We saw a lot of games starting to go in that push, especially at the launch of Overwatch and some of these other online services. And it was Bethesda of all people, good old Bethesda, who kind of came out and said, single player games are not dead. We are not giving up on single player games. Um, we are releasing all of our games still for single player. I believe at the time it was a Wolfenstein game that had just come out. Uh, it might've been the remaster, like the redo of Wolfenstein. It might've been around that era. Um, but Bethesda, of all people, came out and said, no, 
we are not abandoning single player games. And I think there was a strong, strong push there for a very long time to do that. And boy, am I glad they didn't. And I feel like this is a culmination of that message of just like, yes, you can play multiplayer. You could summon in your buddies to play with you. They'll be like a ghost. You can go haunt other people's worlds or uh, wear the defender ring and go defend other people's worlds. I have turned all that off. I don't want to be bothered. I just want to fight the game, which is plenty hard, but um, a very robust, dense experience that really feels good. And, you know, in terms of just exploring and seeing the world and looking around and seeing all these different places I can go, and I'm not going to even show you everything that's behind this optional door area because it's just too much, but just walking around and kind of like, what's next? What's around the big corner? You know, what's, what's around the next corner? Is it something big? And I mean, you could probably see it there. I didn't notice it until I almost stumbled on it, but that's a dragon. <laughs> that's a dragon just laying there waiting. An optional, basically a boss. I mean, I, I don't think technically the game defines it as a boss, but uh, yeah, he's a big guy. And I'm like, well, I'm thinking about it. When you kind of go this way, the game, I mean, I guess you could quick travel, but you're stuck. <laughs> that, that lip is kind of a one-way street, buddy. So, uh, you know, get swinging. Um, thankfully, I, I did destroy him on the first try, and that's where I'll wrap up this video. But you miss out on so much stuff because of not exploring. And just love on yet another love letter on my channel to one of the greatest games I've ever played. Just some really cool mechanics in play here and a really fun battle that I think a lot of people will probably not get to because they just want to beat the game. It's like, oh, I'm done. I don't want to play this anymore. And I would just say, don't rush. Take your time. This game's been out a very long time. It's not going anywhere. Yes, your backlog will grow. Yes, you'll miss out on some of the other cool things that may be going on right now. But this is such a reward in itself. And I feel like the combat here is just so crisp and so beautiful. And I can't say enough wonderful things about it. So, um... To all my friends who have not yet played Elden Ring, who think that, you know, um, this isn't for them, or, you know, you kind of know what you think this game is about, I would challenge you and say, I don't think you do. And I would say that the, the level of satisfaction you get for fighting and beating these enemies, these larger-than-life monstrosities, who, by the way, you find totally optionally for exploring, is such a high it's i mean like winning chick it's like winning a warzone match but like on steroids uh and it's so cool so rewarding so yet another video yet another love letter to elden ring um i really think i'm, I'm in the home stretch now maybe not i don't know um but I, I was doing some content last night and everybody's like oh we're getting to the end you're in the optional area option you know, i don't know we'll see it's over when it's over i wish it would never end but i know one day you know all good things, right? Just like this dragon, all good things. There you go. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, hope you found this video inspirational. Play Elden Ring. Thank you all. <laughs> I already said that. Take care of yourselves, all right? And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.